Hey guys, this is Matt from Quistorf Guitar 101 coming at you with another video for the whole songwriting series. So, right now we've been talking about the two main Nashville numbering system patterns based on the major scale. Uh, one based on the 6th string, the root 6, and the other one on the A string, the root 5. And then we've talked about how to go between both of the patterns, working between the two different positions, and how they overlap a little bit. So the next stage, and this is a really big part of the whole songwriting stage here, is to talk about how do we get out of just these six chords between both of the shapes that's still just six chords. <coughs> the answer is a really cool concept known as modal interchange. Fancy name. Uh, and what that is basically saying that we're going to borrow more chords from another key. In this case, what's known as the parallel minor key. So this is going to involve learning another Nashville shape, uh, the minor scale. So we're going to have majors and minors. But again, the focus here is the visuals. So we're going to basically say, here is the visuals for the major. Now let's learn the visuals for the minor that are going to be overlapping the patterns that we already know. And the idea is to be able to borrow chords from the minor to use for just different sounding chord progressions. Right now it's all been pretty much stock by the book. We're using the six main chords in the major, you know, disregarding the, uh, the diminished chord, which is the seventh chord. And we're saying, let's see what we can do with uh, those six and you know it's it's gonna sound very stock as soon as you start adding in chords from the parallel minor it gets a little more interesting this is the kind of stuff that you'll see uh, in a lot of you know, the Beatles music where they're just you, you might look at a song going where the heck did they pull the chords from and well a lot of that is going to be in modal interchange along with some other substitutions but this is a very big part of writing chord progressions and songwriting and trying to sound different than what's out there and just trying to use different types of chords that maybe aren't as uh, you know you, you might hear a tune and say oh that's kind of predictable I can hear the chord before it even happens well hopefully this will help to write progressions that aren't as predictable which is very interesting or it leads to just some different melodies you might hear so just like we started the whole series we've got to look at the minor scale pattern and how the chords uh, are overlapped to the single note so here's We'll stay with G. G is cool. So here's this, the minor scale pattern for G. Uh, we're starting on in the same root, third fret on the sixth string. And basically, the minor scale has three notes that are different than the major scale. You have a flat third, a flat six, and a flat seven. So three notes are going to be lower. Uh, so here's you know the same start. You have the G, third fret. You have the A and the five. And then here is going to be our flat third, which is this B flat. That's the sixth fret. So you start off with a three, five, and a six. So that's going to become our one, our two, and our three chords. And then on the A string, we're going to have the third fret is our fourth. The fifth is going to be on the fifth fret, ironically. Uh, now the sixth is, is flat, so the sixth is going to be also on the 6th fret, ironically, uh, but again, it's, it's a half step lower than where the major scale. The major scale, remember, was 3, 5, 7, 3, 5, 7. Well, so far, we started with 3, 5, 6, and then 3, 5, 6. So there's our 6 notes. The minor scale, we're going to add a 7th note, uh, or the 7th chord. So this is going to be over 2 frets from where the 6 is. So I'm going to go from the 6th fret up to the 8th fret on the A string. So our shape, it definitely moves out of position a little bit. But you end up with 3, 5, 6, 3, 5, 6, and then I'm going to slide over to the 8th there. So our chords are going to be you know, the 1, 2, 3 chord, 4, 5, 6, and now we have 7. And the reason we want 7 chords here, or 7 notes, is because in the major, where we're only using the six notes, the seventh chord is actually diminished, and we're just not going to really use that too much right now. Uh, in the minor scale, the diminished chord ends up being the two chord. 
So we have to. I mean, it's right, right out of the, the gates. You've got, bang, here's the first chord, and oop, there's a the diminished chord. So we have to kind of look at it. So with that being said, here is the breakdown of the chords for the minor scale in our Nashville system. The one chord is now going to be minor. So there we go. There's our root six minor chord. All right, so I have my bar on three and my third and fourth finger on five. Hopefully you know the shapes by now, so I'm not going to get too involved in the chord pattern, with the exception of the diminished chord, which is coming up next. So here's our minor one chord. Now the diminished chord, there's a few different ways to finger this. Uh, basically, the easiest way to see the shape is if you take a D chord, and I'm going to play a D chord pattern on the wrong string, on the wrong fret. I'm going to be on the fourth fret on my D string, and that's where my first finger is going to be. And at that point, I'm going to form a D shape. So I've got my first finger on four on the D string, third finger on five, on the G and my second finger on four on the B string. So there's my very wrong D chord shape. And I'm going to use my thumb and I'm going to grab the fifth fret from on the E string, low E string. And I'm going to dampen out the A string and also the high E string. So you're going to play low E and then the D, G, and B string. And this is the actual diminished chord. That's the shape of it. Very out there sounding chord. So this is has been, in my experience with teaching, the easiest way to visualize the pattern. I've seen a couple different ways to finger it. I mean, some people will do this if it's not too bad to reach around with your thumb. Plus, it looks cool. That's what counts, right? So there's the diminished with that fingering. Uh, the other one I've seen a lot is people will actually use the third finger on the root on the fifth fret on the E string, and that leaves the, you know, you have your first finger where it was in the other pattern, like the D, but I'm going to go, instead of doing one, two, and three, like a D chord, I'm going to go one, two, and four. So my pinky is playing that fifth fret on the third string, and then my third finger comes up and grabs the, uh, the fifth fret on the E string. So it's still, you can kind of see that D shape in there, but it's not the same exact fingering as a D chord would be. So that's the second way I've seen it. And the, uh, the third way is to actually bar the uh, first finger on the fourth fret from the D to the B string. Use your third finger, where it would be in a D chord, you know, fifth fret on the third string. And then you reach up with your second finger and grab the five on the low E. So it's a little bit of a bar to it, partial bar. But those are the three main fingerings. You can experiment with each, and hopefully one of those, or none of them, will <laughs> feel comfortable. But I always thought doing the D with the thumb is a great way to visualize that. So at any rate, that's the two chord. So the one chord is the minor, then the two chord is our diminished. Where the three is, now remember the three is on the sixth fret. It's a flat three. This is the major chord. So, so far you have minor, diminished, major. One, two, and three. Uh, four chord, right here, this is going to be another minor. So, so far the one and the four chords are minor. And guess what? So is the five, which is right over two frets. And that's that same shape we saw in the major with uh, Nashville numbering system, the major scale pattern, where you had the major one, major four, major five, or one, four, five, the basis of you know, everything. Well, now in the minor, we have the same location, but they're all minor chords. This is where you get those minor blues, minor one, four, and five. Really cool stuff. It's all taken from the minor. So it's still one, four, five, but they're all minor chords. Okay, so there's our four, there's the five chord. Now the six, which is again uh, flat as far as positioning compared to the major. Uh, so I'm on the sixth fret. This is a major chord. So you have a major six. And then the 7, which is going to be over 2 frets from the 6, is also major. 
So you end up with, from the four chord, you have a four chord minor, five chord minor, six chord major, seventh chord major, and then you cycle right back to your one chord. So once again, I'm going to run the whole key. This is the minor scale on G. So one chord minor, two chord diminished, three chords major, four chords minor, five chords minor, six chords major, seventh chord is major, and we cycle right back. So just like how we worked the original Nashville numbering system, the major key, you want to work the heck out of this whole minor key. And when you have them down, you'll start to see the overlap between the majors and the minors. And you can grab chords from either key. I'll do just one really quick progression just to give you an idea of how cool this is. And something that you hear a lot in, in tunes that use this, this kind of borrowing. If I go back to my major, and I'm going to do just a simple one, five, four, which would be, you know, here's the one chord, there's the five, there's the four. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to borrow the four chord from the parallel minor, which is a minor chord. So I'm going to now visualize my new pattern for the minor. There's my four chord. That's a minor chord. And what you get is this really neat progression with a major one, major five, a major four, and then a minor four. That's something you hear in a lot of those kind of 60s types of progressions where they throw in some Beatlesque, you know, vibes. There's one, five, four, and a minor four. And then minor four. Ah, nice little cadence. That's just one super quick example of how cool this stuff is. And it's also one of the challenges. And what we'll do next time is we'll look at progressions that go between the root six major Nashville system pattern and the minor pattern. And again, we're, we're really trying to simplify the theory here and make it completely visual. So you can really see the layout of here's the major scale and then here's the minor scale with you know the extra chord, obviously. So work on that. The next video will be dedicated to different chord progressions going between the major root six and the minor root six. So the word of the day is, well, it's actually two words, parallel minor or modal interchange. Or if you're really cool, you can say modal interchange and use some kind of accent to make you sound like you know what you're talking about. Till next time.